Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Jason, the Art of Creation Homestead. And today, we're back in the kitchen. We're going to be doing some more apples, all right? Today, it's going to be some home canned apples and a light syrup, okay? We're going to can some quarts of apples here, and I'm going to bring you around here to the corner let Miss Angela K show you what we got going on, all right? As you can see, we have a ton of apples here. And this isn't even all of them that we're going to do. This is going to be, this is going to take for seven quarts, it's going to take nearly a half bushel. A half bushel is around, is around 24 pounds. Uh, this is going to take around 21 pounds, so it's going to take nearly a half bushel. So these, just like with the apple butter, if you watch that video, if not, we will leave a link. <laughs> um, these are Melrose apples. They are a medium hard apple. They are also considered to be semi-sweet. So they're perfect for anything like this because you can do multiple things with these because they are semi-hard. For canning apples, you really don't want to use a soft apple, like a Macintosh or a Jonathan or something like that, because they will break down too much. You want a semi-hard to hard apple. Uh, you can use, if you live anywhere in the area of Ohio or surrounding areas where you can get Melrose, they are great for this. Uh, you could also use Fuji. You could use Gala, Red Delicious, Golden Delicious, anything like that. Anything like that would be great because they would hold up to the process without breaking down. So what we've got to do, we've got to peel them and wedge them up. Well, if you're using a peeler like mine, which is the fastest way by far, what you want to do, this is your little peeling blade, if you're going to make apple jelly, like we showed you in another video, out of the peels, then you'll want to set this blade so that you leave a little meat on your, your peels. But we've already made apple jelly, so these, I've set the blade all the way down, as far down as it will go. See, there's very little space between the, the blade and the lip. That way it'll just slide just right under the skin and just take the skin off and you will leave all the apple flesh intact but you do not want to slice it on here. So you want to drop the slicing blade. What you want to do is you want to loosen this little wing nut right here. You want to loosen it and just let it drop and then tighten it back down. That way your blade is dropped. And it won't core it. That's the problem. If you don't let it slice it, it won't core it either. But we've got a solution for that. Everybody's got them, they're easy to find. Yes. We're going to use the apple wedger and it's going to core it and wedge it all at one time and it's going to make this job so much easier. And over here in this bowl, we have a big bowl full of acidulated water. And what I mean by that, I have put water in here and about three tablespoons of lemon juice so that it keeps your apples from oxidizing and turning brown. Because for this, for apple butter, you don't really care if they turn a little brown because it doesn't matter. For canning them, you want them to stay beautifully colored. You don't want them to turn brown. So you want to put them, after you peel them and wedge them, you want to put them in acidulated water. So now we're going to get started on the peeling. I'll show you. I'll show you how we do one, how we peel and wedge one. But I'm not going to bore you to death as we do a half a bushel apples. So with this, it's just this simple. You just turn it and see it just barely slides right under the skin. And see, it's that quick. Now you just pull it off the pegs. If you can get it off, it, they, get, <laughs> they get stuck pretty good. Now. You will have to tr take a knife and trim up a little bit because as you can see that the place that cuts out the core on your wedger is very small. So see, you're going to have to trim that up just a little bit, but not much. So I'm going to go get a knife and we're going to do that. Okay, so we just have a knife and I'm just going to trim that little bit up. I'm just going to trim that little bit up and any bruised spots or anything like that, at this point you want to cut them out. And there you go. Now, we'll take the our apple 
core and wedger. You want to put it down on the core. And everybody knows how to use one of these. Keep your fingers clear. Keep your fingers clear. <laughs> and just slam it down. And see, you got perfect wedges. And now you drop them into the acidulated water. We finally got all the apples peeled and chopped up and everything. Now we're going to make start by making our syrup. We're doing a light syrup that way the apples are more useful for multiple things. So this is five and a half cups of pure cane sugar. And to this we're going to add ten and a half cups of water. And we're going to bring that up to a slow boil just just enough to dissolve. You just want to dissolve the sugar. And then we'll be back and show you what's next. Okay, the sugar has all dissolved and we have a beautiful light syrup in here now. And I've divided it between two pots because it's going to take that to hold all of the apples. And we've drained the acidulated water off of the apples. This is not all the apples, by the way. No. Plenty more. <laughs> There's plenty more. But you have to drain all of the acidulated water off of the apples. You don't want that in your mix. So now we're going to put our apples into our pots. Be careful, don't let it splatter on you because the syrup is warm. It's not hot, but it is warm. And you don't really want that splattering on you. So we've got all the apples into the syrup in both pots. And as you can see, they're very full, but that's gonna cook down. Even though you don't cook this for long, it's, it's gonna cook down. So now at this point, all you wanna do is bring this to a boil over medium high heat if it starts to boil too rapidly turn it down uh, bring it to a boil over medium high heat and then reduce it to medium low and let it boil for about five to ten minutes until your apples start to soften and that then we'll be back and show you what's next the apples and the syrup have come to a boil at medium high heat I reduced the heat to medium low and let them cook. It took probably about five minutes to get them soft enough. So now we're going to take a slotted five spoon. Five minutes after the boil. After the boil. Now we're going to take a slotted spoon because you don't want the syrup yet. And we're going to start loading the apples into the jar. You want to leave a generous half inch headspace because you want extra space in there because you have to put in syrup and these apples are nice and soft now they're not but they're not falling apart as you can tell you don't want them falling apart you want them still to hold their shape that's the reason you don't want a soft apple because in this time a soft apple would have cooked to mush and you don't want that just like you don't want to get your your slotted spoon stuck down in the funnel that's not good either. <laughs> so, you want to keep filling this up. Isn't that pretty? These are going to be pretty jars of apples. Okay. Now we need to push that down. We can fit maybe two more slices in there. Maybe two more wedges. Ah, I think we could fit another couple. There we go. Now, we want to fill it up with our syrup <laughs> and not throw everything everywhere so what we, you want to do is you want to push your ladle or a mug down like this push the apples down with it and pull up some syrup and pour your hot syrup works pretty good. over your apples you're going to need just a little bit more a little bit more than that because we're at a little over an inch headspace right now there we go well, let's well, debubble. I'll be. That's pretty handy. Now, once we debubble, we'll probably have to add a little bit more syrup. Cause the, Press the apples down a little bit. You can see it hit through our, our headspace off. So we're going to add just a little bit more could syrup. Could you use the bottom of your mug to press the apples down? You probably could. Because they keep flopping up on you. There we go. I just used the debubbling tool. 
Okay, now we'll add a little bit more syrup. There we go. And like I said, you, you don't want an exact half inch. You want a generous half inch. So more between a half inch and three fourths. So you want to take this, push your apples down just a little bit. And if one gets a little unruly and, and don't want to go under the syrup, just take it out and put it in the next jar. But they all need to be covered in syrup? For the most part. So this little dude, he's it's, going back in. It's been so now we'll put our lid on. These, the jars were washed <clears throat> and heated in the heated dry cycle in the dishwasher. And these had some boiling water poured over them. Now we're just going to tighten this finger tight. And now we're going to take, take our lid off of our canner. Lovely camera mister. Now we're going to take this beautiful jar of apples cool. and put it into our canner. Now, the water is going to keep expanding as I add more jars. So it's going to cover them. Because you got to be careful of that fill line right here. You don't want to... You don't want to fill past that. So we're going to keep filling. We'll be back. The last jar of these beauties. Aren't those beautiful? We've got seven quarts in here. It's a full canner. we got seven quarts. And... Now, we want to put the plate on. If you're doing this on a stovetop canner, which you should have already full? had that on. No, that's fine. Okay. If you should have you should have already had a stovetop canner at a boil and ready to go and be putting these in. Now, we'll put the plate in. And I usually take this and push down. And as you can see, it don't go nowhere. It don't go much with Pines. I mean with cords. Now we're going to put the lid on and bring it back up to a boil. And when it's back up to a boil, it will pro it will process for 20 minutes. And then we will turn the heat off and let it sit for five and then we'll pull them out. Okay, they've processed for 20 minutes and they've set for five. Now you want to be really careful pulling them out because this is full and also you're dealing with hot syrup, so it could spew a little. So pull it straight up, tip it just a tiny bit, and take it straight over. What do you think of those, Jason? I believe it looks like some good eating to me. Those are gorgeous. And you want to be very careful with these. Don't tip them much because you don't want that hot syrup going under the flat. I will get rid of the water in a minute. There we go. Now we will take some paper towel and we will dab away that water that's on top. Just be careful not to push down on the little popper in the middle because then you've sealed it and it hasn't sealed itself and then you'll get a false seal. So now once you, once you dab all the water away, you leave them sit for 18 to 24 hours. Don't move them and don't mess with them. Just leave them sit for 18 to 24 hours and then you're ready to store them away.